first step is to write everything down figure out where you stand second step is to uh, start to cut back on how much you use services from somebody else third step is find alternatives so here's a list personally towards the uh, road of self-sufficiency and self-reliance um, first off the first thing that I think everybody should do is to sit down and take a piece of paper or get their laptop computer out and write down everything in their life that they personally rely on somebody else for a service for what they consume everything from groceries to energy everything I mean just sit down and write out a list and there's a lot of things that you'll kind of not really think about and it'll hit you as you're writing the list down and be honest with the list don't candy coat it I mean seriously get in there and write down everything everything from bills um, to sewage treatments water service everything and then actually set it up into a couple different uh, things here first off when you're writing down your list write down you know what it is electricity is for an example beside it write down who the energy provider is who actually provides you with that electricity who provides you with that service and then beside that if you can if you have access to the information write down what you actually use you know kilowatt hour usage uh, for that example and that that's kind of the structure of your list and go through everything after you write the list um, you're, you'll get a whole new uh, perspective it'll it'll completely switch gears in your brain to what's going on you'll really see how reliant you are on other people just for basic survival everyday survival it's scary and if you have a small list Congratulations, you're already halfway there. You're ahead of the ball game. Second step is once you've actually gotten your list in front of you, sit down, take a look at it, and actually start to identify the things that you can start to eliminate or at least downsize on or even to, uh, just start to minimize uh, how much you actually use. For an example, again, with the electrical, you know, you, you know that uh, you have to, you know, you want to have electricity. It's something comfortable for you. It's something you're used to. Um, a lot of guys fear the dark. I know my kids do. It's, it's just a normal thing. Human beings, man, we, we want light. So, you know, you've identified you want electricity. You have identified who the uh, service provider is, which is not yourself. So, you know... Ah uh, man, I gotta, I gotta figure something out here because I'm completely dependent on a grid source. I'm completely dependent on someone else. And lastly, you actually know what your consumption is, and knowing your consumption is half the battle. If you can actually limit what you consume and actually cut back on that, you'll be ahead of the ball game. And this is what this second step is about. So the first thing, or the first thing was to make a list. The second thing is to actually start to cut back on what you use. If you can get your energy usage down, it's going to be a win-win for you. It's going to be a win-win because number one, your bill is going to be less. Um, number two, you're actually going to start to pay attention to what you're actually consuming. It's just like gas in a car, guys. If you put gas in a car, you can only drive so far before you run out you got to know what that fuel gauge is. you got to know what that fuel gauge is doing if you want to get anywhere. So if you can get that consumption down to a minimal level, a minimal level you feel comfortable with. I'm not saying go all out and switch the breaker off and go back to the caveman days. I'm talking actually seriously just cut it back to the point where you feel that hey this is fine. And I'm not using all the lights in the house as much. I've switched to you know incandescence, fluorescence. Uh, I've started paying attention to actually 
unplugging my TV or unplugging some of my appliances when I'm not using them. A lot of people don't know that uh, a lot of appliances have a warm-up circuit and a TV is a good example. It has a warm-up circuit in it. That TV, no matter what, is ready for you to turn on because it has a built-in circuit that keeps it at that state. It's the same thing with a, a desktop computer. A lot of guys think that by turning off the uh, power on the front of the desktop computer that it is off and that's actually a complete uh, fallacy. It's not. It's still on and the only way to actually turn a computer off is by the uh, power supply itself or unplugging it. It's just something to remember. Everything you have uses energy when it's plugged into a wall. It's just a fact and that's one big thing you can do to try to cut back on your energy consumption is to uh, start unplugging stuff but moving on you go completely down that list you try to cut everything back to the most minimalistic absolutely bare bones this is what I'm comfortable with like groceries for example start cutting back your groceries uh, say you know what I don't really need that I'm not you know really gonna buy the, the you know big bag of ruffled potato chips or whatever and instead I'm gonna get this or start buying a little bit in bulk on the stuff that normally you would just buy small bags and I mean just take a lot of time to just try to get that uh, that grocery bill down to a manage manageable level and sooner or later your your list will be done and you'll be to the point where you're like okay I feel comfortable I feel better because I have a little bit more money to spend there's more money in my pocket and uh, I'm not so reliant on all these services yeah I mean they're still there I still gotta go to the grocery store and that's when we move on to the next step okay the next step is you already know and we're gonna still follow through with the uh, energy as the uh, example <clears throat> the uh, third step take the time to actually find alternatives what is the alternative I'm paying X amount of money per month for this service if I just save up a little bit of money you've already saved some money with step two that's why step two is important Take some of that money I've saved and uh, invest in an alternative. What is something that's actually going to provide me with a service that I control? For an example, solar energy, uh, wind energy. It depends on the area you live in. You might live in an area where you don't get enough direct sunlight and you're always you know, overcast, cloud covered, and you're not going to be able to uh, partake in solar but if you can that's just one viable alternative uh, when the sun's not shining the wind is usually blowing so it's good to have a hybrid system something that's solar wind and I always add a third tier because I'm a kind of survivalist uh, mindset person and I would add like a generator uh, me personally it would be a diesel generator but that's just me. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. That way, if the sun's not shining and the wind ain't really blowing, at least I can top my battery bank off with my generator. So take some time to start identifying alternatives, things that you can control. Uh, for food, if you live in an area where you can grow your own food, start doing it. Uh, a big thing you can start doing that's really neat and really uh, good to get into is uh, raised bed gardening, uh, square foot gardening. Those are some terms to do a little bit of research on. Square foot gardening, raised bed gardening will really be a good alternative. And if you can kind of start growing uh, a lot of your own food, that's great. Another alternative uh, to refrigeration, for an example, if you start learning how to do some basic stuff like canning, uh, some food preservation. That'll save you a lot of your energy costs with your refrigerator. You might actually be able to downsize your refrigerator. I think you can probably see that refrigerator in the background. That was hooked up to my solar system. That thing only draws 0.7 amps. 
I mean, it doesn't draw much at all. Actually, I think it's 0 .07 if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look on the back of it again. But uh, you might be able to get to the point where you'll be able to downsize to that degree. Or you can, you, you know, you already have the idea that, hey, I'm going to get a solar system. I might as well invest some money into a DC uh, small deep freezer. It's a lot better for a uh, solar system if you have a dedicated DC circuit. It just it helps so much with the efficiency and you'll, you'll figure that out as you get into this deeper. Like I said, the third step is find alternatives. Find alternatives to everything. And that's, that's going to be the big thing. That's where a lot of your research starts to really get into full spin. I mean, there's stuff that uh, I'm still getting into that uh, a lot of people think are a little extreme and drastic. Uh, composting toilets, for an example. A lot of guys go, what the hell? You want to compost your own crap? Are you nuts? I look at them and say, aren't you nuts for wanting to uh, flush your fecal matter down a toilet and put it into a tank by using fresh water that is drinking water? Why do you want to use drinking water to flush down your own crap? Do you, do you feel me on that? So some of the alternatives might seem extreme. That's just the name of the game. I mean, their alternatives are different. They're, uh, they're not what normal people are used to. It's not what you're used to at first. And then later on you'll look at it like, hey, that's pretty neat. And all you got to do is crank this thing, add a little bit of sawdust, and whatever bacteria does its job. But uh, let's move on. So if, <clears throat> to recap here real quick, and I know I'm rambling and I'm just... I'm trying to be, you know, a little bit upbeat and not be so down in the dumps on my videos. First step is to write everything down. Figure out where you stand. Second step is to uh, start to cut back on how much you use services from somebody else. Third step is find alternatives. Seriously, find alternatives. And then move forward with those alternatives. I mean, start to use them. And that works into the fourth step. The fourth step is a little bit more extreme, and it's something that you'll get into a little bit later on. And that's actually to do this for real. I mean, who cares? That's something big that I've personally dealt with in my life, guys that uh, I'm sick of. I really am. Don't let somebody else tell you how to live your life. It's just not worth it. And seriously, if you go through some bad times, like being unemployed like me, um, dealing with, you know, having to be so dependent on somebody else, um, don't let those, those times in your life be wasted. And seriously, sit there and, and you know, just say, ah, oh, man, my life sucks. I can't do anything, My, you know, the king's got me by the balls, it's it, it's over. I'm done, surfed him, I'm a slave. That ain't true. I mean, just take the bad times and learn something from them. That's something my grandma used to always tell me. She used to tell me all the time. I, I'd come to her and she'd say, you know, what's bothering you? And I'd tell her, you know, I called her mammal. I'd say, hey mammal, you know, this is going on, blah, blah, blah. And she'd sit there real calmly and wisely and she'd listen to me and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the end of the conversation, she'd look me straight in the eyes and she'd say, so what'd you learn? And it's the truth. If you don't learn something from a bad situation, you're already lost. I mean, that's just all there is to it. Uh, you have to you have to be able to uh, criticize yourself at some points, um, and there's other points that you're going to have to learn that uh, you're not nuts. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Just because you think differently from other people, you're not nuts, and that'll get me on to another story. But uh, I might save that for another video. Uh, I might add it in this one. We'll just continue. So once you get to the fourth step where you just go ahead and you're like, screw it, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it for real, 
go big, go home. Uh, take the money that you saved and start to invest in these alternatives. And then tell your energy providers, your, your people that you were a slave to uh, for their service, uh, just give them a big, I don't know, you, you, get, you get the idea. And that's it. Tell them to go, you know, fuck off and move on. <laughs> so that's all I can say about it. And if you run into some people that kind of look at you kind of, kind of weird because uh, you've got solar panels on your roof or you have a heat collector, a uh, solar hot water heater, a big wind turbine, um, compost uh, bins in the back. Where they go to use your restroom and there's uh, sawdust and they don't, I don't know. know if anybody's seen the movie, uh, any of you guys seen the movie Demolition Man where the guys like uh, Sylvester Stallone's like. Uh, what are the three seashells for? I mean, stuff like that. I mean, guys are going to be blown. Some guys are going to be really into it. They're going to see your solar panels and be like, hey, man, man, what are these? How do they work? Uh, kind of get into it. And that's when you can kind of step in and do like what I've done and just say, hey, look, you know, there's, there's four steps. There's four steps to this. And, uh, you know, between the third step and the fourth step is when you'll you'll gain your experience and do your most research. And that's that. I mean, that's all I got to say about it for now. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That is that's me. That's straight up, uh, not holding back. That's that's it. That's how I've started to get my head wrapped around it. And I'm not far on that list that I've made personally. I'm still struggling with the uh, third and fourth step to be honest with you. And it's because I had to create that list for myself and creating the, uh, the list is half the battle. And I just kinda laid it out. Here you go. I got you a little bit ahead of the game. And it might work for you, it might not. Little disclaimer, I'm sorry if, you know, if it doesn't and if it does Please, by all means, uh, share it, post it. You know, let's let's get self-reliant together. Let's let's get off this uh, this tit of uh, dependence, basically. Uh, once you start to get the crap out of your life that you're so reliant on, you can start paying more attention to the people that you love. It's a big thing, and that's just the way it is. And like I said, you know, I might seem down in a lot of my videos, and it is what it is. I'm in a bad situation personally, but I'm in a bad situation because I kind of put myself in this situation because I fought. I fought it. I didn't want to let go of the materialistic things. I didn't want to let go of the race car. I didn't want to let go of the off-road truck. I didn't want to let go of the quad. I didn't want to let go of all that stuff. I wanted it. I wanted it so much, I wanted the materialistic bullcrap so much that uh, I ignored the people I loved in my life. Stupid. And not only that, uh, I got so wrapped up in trying to pay those evil, greedy bastards, uh, service providers, for their services to keep me plugged in to stay afloat. It was ridiculous. I mean, to the point where I was taking payday uh, loans out, uh, trying to do all kinds of weird trickery to try to, you know, pay this bill but not pay this bill, to, you know, pay a little bit of this bill just to keep from getting the electric shut off or this or that and everything else. It's just, it's frantic, man. It's crazy. And it's no way to live. Take a little bit of time, figure that stuff out, move on towards a more self-sufficient and self-reliant future. That's the best way I think anybody can pre prepare for the upcoming economic and social craziness that may or may not occur. It's better to be prepared than not, in my opinion. And that's just me. So if you're young and you're, and you're watching this channel and uh, you're kind of thinking to yourself if you want to 
step out and try to get out on your own. My honest opinion, the economy is kind of rough right now. And uh, if you can, I'd really you know, focus on yeah, trying to get a job, trying to do all that. But I wouldn't uh, jump right into uh, moving out and getting out on your own yet, to be honest with you. That's just my my two cents on the subject. Um, and I know that's probably, it sounds kind of hypocritical in a way, as far as self-reliance is concerned. But uh, the more time that you have to think and get your head wrapped around things that are going on and uh, get your head wrapped around the plan for the future, the better off you'll be. And you can't really do that when you're uh, living in a little apartment uh, worried about you know, the girlfriend or the boyfriend or the money or who's doing what, you know, who's not doing their part and this bill short and oh my god I gotta sell this to make it just it gets hectic and there's no way to to really there's no real way to put it other than that so that's just my two cents on the subject long video take it how you will straight up just the way I feel